the Global Investigative Journalism Conference, we asked some of the world's leading experts for their top tips when investigating stories. Um, what is your shooting One of the key lessons is the effective use of online databases. Hello, I'm Margot Williams. I'm an investigative journalist specializing in research. I've been doing this role for the past 40 years at the Washington Post, the New York Times, National Public Radio, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ, and now I'm at The Intercept. What's changed now is that we're working online with online documents and databases, and also training reporters in the newsroom to use these tools, and partnering on projects with reporters and editors. I'm going to give you five tips for more effective research. The first one, and I know you use Google, is to use Google more effectively, use the advanced search. Number two, go beyond Google. Find databases that are invisible to Google, but that are relevant to your investigation or to your beat. Number three, utilize databases from other countries when doing research on your own. One example is that the US government collects all kinds of information on everybody and on other countries. You can do research in US government databases to find information about your country. The fourth tip, be creative about organizing the results of your research. I use Excel to organize my research, and I find that really valuable it, for later in the project, creating data visualizations and for working on the stories. You can use other tools as well. I use Excel, but you can create your own databases with other tools. The last tip is to archive the information that you've gathered. Download pages that you are looking at, download data, and keep it on your hard drive or on a, on a portable drive. You never know if the page may be gone, the information may be deleted, or a government may have taken the information down. The single most important tip I'm going to share with you is to use your online research to find the most authoritative records, public records, corporate records, official records. And if you don't find it online, don't stop there. Go to get the records yourself at an office, get them in the mail, talk to people. The most important thing is to get those documents. I'm going to show an example from a project that I'm working on right now. This is a project called Trial and Terror, where my colleague Trevor Aronson and I built a database of all of the persons who have been prosecuted for terrorism in the United States since 9-11. I'm showing this document that came from the United States Department of Justice. And as you see, it's a messy PDF file and hard to read. It was a list that the Justice Department put out of all of the terrorism defendants from 9-11-01 to December 2011. I was able to scan this file and then very painstakingly turn it into a spreadsheet so that I had the list of names of every person who had been charged up until that date and what crime they were charged with, the date that they were convicted, the date that they were sentenced, what they were sentenced for, and what the sentence was, how long they were going to spend in, in prison for a charge related to terrorism. Uh, so I had this spreadsheet that I was working on. When I went to The Intercept, I got the opportunity to work with Trevor Aronson, and he had his own database. We combined our two databases, and we uh, built this project. Several stories were uh, published along with this database, and the database is online. 
um, you can download it from GitHub. The research that goes into it that's ongoing is I've set up an alert that lets me know whenever another person has been arrested and charged with terrorism. So I get alerts in my inbox. And then we've also set up an alert on the Bureau of Prisons page, which lets us know whenever a prisoner is moved from one prison to another or when he's been released. So we have recorded uh, in our database the date the person was charged, the date that they were sentenced, the date that they, that, that they were moved to another location, and the date that they were released. And you can find an inmate or anyone who has been an inmate in U.S. federal prison since 1982. When we get a new sentenced prisoner, we can look up his name, first and last name, and find a prisoner number. And we use that number to set up our alerts. So this is an example of a search for Victor Boot, the international arms dealer who is now in prison in the United States. He's in a prison in Ohio, and he's going to be held in prison until December 15th, 2029. In our database, each prisoner or former prisoner and each person who is currently awaiting trial for terrorism has a profile page. We built the profiles from the databases of federal prisoners and from court documents, as well as research into each person's history. And here is the page for Victor Boot. The database has the information that came from that spreadsheet I showed previously, and then combined with information from updates and court records. Also from the prison database, we can see the location of where the prisoner is now and information on how to contact the prisoner in that prison. If the person is released, we don't know where they are, but we try to follow up to see if we can interview them when they get out of prison. This is an example of the court records that we retrieve for each one of the prisoners. So we have official information from the courts on the charges and on their trial and on the, on the outcome of their trial and sentencing. Because we've collected the information into a database, we're able to use it for visualizations of the data. If you go to the website, you can see statistics on the number of people who've been arrested and on their demographics and what crimes they were charged with and which terrorist group they were linked to. The example of our terrorism database shows how important it is to retrieve public documents and public information and transform them into a different format where you can use them for analysis and visualization. <laughs>